What if we had a second Brexit referendum? That's a second referendum on the UK's relationship with the EU. So a second referendum is more likely if Theresa May's Brexit deal is rejected, as there has been calls for one by various political parties. Well, formally, what happens if the vote doesn't go through is, is the government has to come back within a certain period of time to Parliament and say what the next step is. The ECJ have said that we could unilaterally remain should the UK chose to. Um, what we're trying to establish is really basic here. It is, do we have the right as the UK to revoke this Article 50 notification? Uh, so the British people, if we had a referendum, for example, could say, actually, we'd like to change course. And so far, I'm hoping, because the European uh, Council lawyers, the uh, Commission lawyers, haven't contested that basic principle, the right to revoke. That, I think, would be a really important win today. So it means that the UK, should it want to remain, it wouldn't take the agreement of all EU member states. The EU would automatically agree with it should the UK want it. So let's just explain how a second referendum would or could occur. So plan A is Theresa May's deal. We end free movement, so we control who comes to our country, we control our borders. We will stop sending vast sums of money to the EU every year. We'll be able to put that money into what matters to us, like our schools and hospitals. Um, and we'll end the jurisdiction of the European Court. We'll make our laws and those will be judged in our courts and not in a European court. But we've also done a good trade deal with the EU. This needs to pass through the UK Parliament and be finalised before 11pm on March the 29th, 2019. If the deal is passed, it means the UK can negotiate a future trade deal with the EU based on the safeguards put in place by the withdrawal agreement. The safeguards are things like EU citizens' rights, the Northern Irish border, security cooperation, the transition period to ease the transition for businesses, and economic certainty by putting one foot down the path of a Brexit which ensures following EU rules closely to maintain frictionless trade. However, it will probably get blocked. We give away too much control over our laws, we lose the opportunities of Brexit, including the ability to strike free trade deals in practice, um, and we'd be paying up 39 billion uh, for the privilege. Because we will be under ECJ law without having a say on those laws, the future trade relationship is too uncertain, it's only so many pages long, and it's not legally binding. Northern Ireland gets single market access, while the rest of the UK doesn't, and we could be stuck in a customs union indefinitely. So then what happens? Well, it largely depends on what it was MPs didn't like about the deal more specifically. For example, if they didn't like the indefinite customs union part of the deal, it will be clear that May's deal was not hard enough on Brexit. If they didn't like the uncertainty of the future trade relationship, then it would be clear it didn't do enough to ensure economic certainty, and May's deal was not soft enough on Brexit. But either way, Theresa May would look weak. She would have to admit she did a bad job. But knowing her character and what she said, she probably wouldn't resign automatically. Leadership is about taking the right decisions, not the easy ones. As Prime Minister, my job is to bring back a deal that delivers on the vote of the British people, uh, that does that by ending free movement, all the things I raised in my statement, ending free movement, ensuring we're not sending vast annual sums to the EU any, year, uh, any longer, ending the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, but also protects jobs and protects people's livelihoods, protects our security, protects uh, the Union of the United Kingdom. I believe that this is a deal which does deliver that, which is in the national interest. And am I going to see this through? Yes. But she could face a vote of no confidence. However, there are Tory Brexiteers who haven't handed in their letter of no confidence, such as Boris Johnson and David Davis. Why don't you all grow a pair and put one of yourselves in charge and actually deliver the Brexit you keep banging on that you want? <laughs> One of you, do something. 
I think the public would regard it as political parlour games for us to be engaging in a lot of that shenanigans rather than just focusing on the deal. I also think the Prime Minister's got every right, and this is one of the reasons I stepped down, to present her deal. But the problem is the amount of support that it will have amongst her own co colleagues, but also uh, in the House and with the public at large. Who are more likely to back her to getting a better deal. Let's also not forget that we're on the verge of a general election. Then maybe the better thing to do is have a general election so that the people of this country can decide who they want, what who about? they want to govern. And at that point, the new government, hopefully us, would negotiate the best we can with yeah, the European I Union. Appreciate. A general election which a battered and bruised Tory party do not want to happen. An election would more than likely give the Tories not enough of a majority to be able to hold a majority with another party in a hung parliament. Therefore, if Labour somehow team up with the SNP, which would probably mean accepting another Scottish independence vote at some point, then they would be able to hold a majority in parliament as a coalition. And from there, they could renegotiate a new deal. But the problem is the EU have said there is no other deal. Well, first of all, what I have said is that no deal would be better than a bad deal. Uh, you talk about a Canada-style deal. Actually, that's not on the table. It's not on the table for the United Kingdom. What is on the table from the European Union is effectively breaking up the United Kingdom by having a, a trade agreement with Great Britain and keeping Northern Ireland in the single mar most of the single market and the customs union, creating a customs border down the Irish Sea, effectively carving Northern Ireland away from the rest of the United Kingdom. We don't have time before March 2019 to start negotiations from scratch. Theresa May has promised she would pull a no deal and she has formal preparations she can activate to prepare for a no deal. If we don't find a deal or extend Article 50 before March 2019, we default to a no deal anyway and crash out the EU. So plan B is to come up with a plan within 21 days of the deal being rejected and renegotiate the bits of the agreement Parliament didn't like, and then put it towards a second vote in Parliament. Meanwhile, making formal preparations for a no deal. If Parliament still rejects the deal after a second vote, then what happens? I personally believe that under those circumstances, a sort of Norwegian arrangement is probably the next best step. But whatever we may or may not do, we could arrive on the 21st of January with a statement that no deal can be reached, and it could be that at that time there is across this House somewhere a majority in favour of some solution which would avoid us leaving without a deal. And for those of us who believe that leaving without a deal would be a catastrophe for our country, it seems right that we should at least have the chance to crystallise and express that majority should it arise. And the only way of doing that is to provide for the motion to be amendable. And that is the reason for this amendment. Well, we probably end up voting to apply to extend Article 50. That's when the three main options people have been talking about for Brexit could develop further. So Theresa May's plan is all about accepting the Irish backstop and transition period for the time being and negotiating a better deal in the future, which may or may not include the Irish backstop and will eventually lead to the end of the transition period. The only problem is we don't know when those end dates really come. Theresa May doesn't want a second referendum for the time being. Her plan is basically to just get on with it and get this deal through. But then there is another plan sort of developing. It's, it's the Remainers plan. Well, the alternative isn't no deal. Nobody's going to allow no deal. How could we? No deal would be... You've got until good. March. Well, it's December, this weekend. We have the vote election on the 11th. Before, Look, before we have March. The we, we have the vote on the 11th. Parliament makes its decision. I suspect it's going to be no. Mm. The, the Prime Minister then has a limited number of days in order to go back to the EU and try and negotiate something else. That comes back to Parliament. All options are open then. Now, remaining in the European Union presents some huge constitutional crisis. How do you remain when Britain voted to leave? Well, the argument is that if Parliament can't decide and we're heading for a no deal, it might be in the best interest of the nation to hold a second referendum with an option to remain. And people like Tony Blair have said that whichever version of Brexit we go with, it's final. I don't think there's a majority for Theresa May's plan. 
Um, but I don't think there's a majority for a clean break Brexit. And I don't think there's a majority for any version of Brexit. So I think Parliament will be paralysed and gridlocked. And the only way in the end this is going to be resolved is putting it back to the people. However, this pretends a constitutional crisis of democracy. Rejecting the will of the people still hangs over such a vote. So, to get over this, Remainers, or people who are more interested in a softer Brexit, could develop a Norway-style model. The kind of model that Labour want for Brexit, where we remain in a customs union and the single market. And that would probably pass through Parliament. The SNP want that, Labour want that. It gives a, a big enough majority. But the EU have said, being in the single market means accepting free movement of people, and being in the customs union means accepting European Court of Justice law, and having no say in making those laws because we still would be leaving the EU, leaving the EU Parliament and all the things that come with being part of the EU. The UK would be a vassal state, even more than May's deal, but at the very least it would be leaving while solving the Northern Irish issue. Of course, it could be on a temporary basis, like the transition period already is. But instead of being May's deal, it would completely reject the Irish backstop and instead just remain in the customs union and single market until a better solution can be found. After a period within this deal, and at the end of this period, that's when a referendum could be held asking the UK whether it wants to go closer or go further away from the EU. So knowing you for 20 years, I just don't believe that if your deal goes down, you are the kind of person who would contemplate taking this country into a no-deal situation. Am I wrong? The decision, it will be a decision for Parliament as to whether they accept the deal that I and the Government have negotiated on behalf of the, Euro of the United Kingdom with the European Union. I believe that's a good deal. For I understand. And I don't want to go no, over no, those previous it's answers. It's my, my issue is, I don't believe you are the kind of person who could contemplate no deal, even if you don't get this deal. I don't think you'll do it. I think you'll take action to avert it. Am I'm, I wrong in my judgment about you? I'm, uh, well, I've had a number of questions now about what happens if. What I'm saying is very simple. My focus is on the vote that okay. takes place on December the 11th. That's fine. I was asking actually because about I've whether... Negotiated, the, because oh. I've negotiated what I believe truly to be a good deal for the UK. Okay, and I understand all of that. On the vote. The, I was asking about the kind of person that I, I think you are. But... but then there has always been the no-deal plan, which is to walk away now, leave the customs union, leave the single market, have no plan for Northern Ireland, and then have an emergency negotiation straight after for Northern Ireland, essentials like medicine and food, etc. People have said the government hasn't made sufficient preparation for no deal, but turn that on its head. The EU has made no preparation for no deal. Has it made any preparation to reduce expenditure in Romania or Poland or the Czech Republic if we leave and they don't get 35 to 40 billion pounds out of us? No. So the strength is with us as the deadline gets closer, because they desperately need our money. The EU is insolvent without a deal for the fast last 21 months of the multi-annual financial framework. So it's pressure on them, not on us. We would essentially be negotiating from outside the EU, making trade deals all over the world and to the EU individually. But is that, is that a hard out? Is that the, the crash out option, the no deal option? Is that what you're talking about? No, it's not actually. I mean, to be fair to the Brexit people, they're not arguing for no deal. No. They're just saying they'd be prepared to have no deal. Should any of that fail, and we end up going round and round in circles, that's when a second referendum could occur, which will probably be a vote between all those three options. The no deal and negotiate later option, May's plan to leave with a deal and negotiate a future trade relationship, and the Remainers plan to stay in the customs union and single market for the time being. Now, given the way polling has been run on May's plan versus no deal or Remain, Remain always comes first, with no deal coming second and May's deal coming last. So the UK would probably end up voting by majority to remain in the customs union and single market for the time being. But do you agree with me? Join in the debate below and subscribe.